First, Stuart McGill stressed and on edge. Tonight, for the first time, the former cricket star breaks his silence on his kidnap nightmare and police reveal a mysterious new suspect. Here's crime editor Simon Boder's exclusive report. I've thought about it probably 20 hours a day ever since. Aussie cricketing legend Stuart McGill, still shaken, still reeling after his nightmare kidnap ordeal. I found myself in a position I couldn't do much about. Couldn't have done anything differently, I don't think. I don't really know. I've, I've thought maybe I could have done something different, but then I wouldn't probably be sitting here talking to you. Did you actually fear for your life that night? I just didn't really know what was going to happen, that's all. I was sort of, oh, I talked to myself all the time. I was just running different scenarios through in my head. Wednesday, April 14, the day Stuart McGill's world came crashing down. Abducted at gunpoint off a of Cremorne Street, the target of alleged drug dealers. I was in a situation that is foreign to me and I was physically and mentally intimidated. What we allege he's gone through is just horrific circumstances. Detective Superintendent Andrew Katsoufis heads up the robbery and serious crime squad. I feel for him and his family now that's all dragged out into the media as well, made quite public being a public figure that he is. Stuart McGill only agreed to break his silence to a current affair to assist strike force detectives who are still trying to track down all those allegedly involved in his kidnapping and extortion. Four men have already been arrested and charged over the kidnapping, including Marino Soteropoulos, the brother of Stuart McGill's partner, Maria Omar. But tonight, for the first time, a current affair can reveal exclusive CCTV footage of two more potential suspects. The CCTV footage captures them going into a Bunnings a couple of hours before the incident occurred. They've bought some items that we believe is associated with the incident. Um, so we are very keen on identifying and speaking with those two males. ACA has also exclusively obtained a computer-generated image of a mystery man called Sonny, a street-level drug dealer who's alleged to be at the heart of the case. Sonny, um, also known as Zach, um, we're still continuing our inquiries, uh, attempting to identify and confirm his identification, locate him. He is described as a Middle Eastern male, mid-30s, chubby appearance, full face beard, um, brown eyes. Stuart McGill maintains all he did was introduce Sonny to Marino and that he had nothing to do with any alleged drug transaction. We, we consider ourselves to be, you know, the innocent parties in this one. Um, part of hospitality is making sure the room works. We introduce people to people, all the other people all the time. In his nine-page police statement, McGill tells detectives the two men have been patrons at the Neutral Bay restaurant he and his partner Maria ran, Aristotle's. Um, if people choose to think something contrary to what's been presented by uh, both myself and the police, then that's up to them. I, you know, I have no interest in talking to people like that anyway, and I never have, to be honest never read the papers, never listen to somebody rubbishing me from the sidelines, and I can see no reason to change that now. The stress of his ordeal clearly evident well, during our interview. I mean, Police maintain you're a victim in all this. There are people out there, and you've said you don't care what they think. But there are people I'll out there. Again. There are Simon, people out Simon, there. Simon, Simon, I'll be very, very clear about this, mm -hmm. okay? In Australia, we operate under a laws, a set of laws. The police have said repeatedly what they believe the situation is. 
And I'd suggest that you pay very, very careful attention to that. Have you been totally truthful all the way along? I'm not even going to bother answering that. And, I, and I'm disappointed that you'd asked the question. Oh, I've got to ask the question. Okay, cool. Well, I'll answer it this way. Please. I'm disappointed that you've asked the question. There's nothing to suggest he's connected um, in any other way other than introducing the two people involved in the matter. Police allege Soteropoulos was seeking to supply Sonny, a suspected street dealer, with cocaine and a dispute developed over two kilograms of the drug. To be honest, I, I mean, I know that I've done nothing wrong. Um, Maria's done nothing wrong. When Sonny vanished, others allegedly involved in the deal blamed McGill, demanding a meeting and demanding he pay up between ninety and $150,000. When McGill explained he had nothing to do with the deal and no money, he was allegedly dragged into a car and taken on an hour-long terror ride. Across the Harbour Bridge, down the M5, ending in the middle of the night at Brinjelli in Sydney's southwestern suburbs, 60 kilometres from Cremorne. Stuart McGill was held captive in this run-down, vacant old cottage. Imagine his terror. Stripped naked, threatened with a gun, and repeatedly bashed until he eventually blacked out. This is a completely horrifying experience for the man to go through. McGill told police his captors showed him some bolt cutters and forced him to sit on the concrete floor. The big guy said, they want me to take your fingers. Eventually, he was released at Belmore and caught a taxi home. The father of two teenagers waited five days before going to police. I was scared that if I went to police, my kids would get hurt. Battered and bruised, he also didn't go to hospital and moved around Sydney, staying at different hotels. This is because I'm scared for my safety. Can I ask why you did wait a week, though, before you reported the kidnapping? Can you tell me that? I was in pain. Um, and also, just the way it fell, it felt over the weekend. Um, so I couldn't get any advice from, you know, either the police or lawyers um, until that time. And as you, you know, you're free to read in the statement that's been quite readily thrown about. Um, you know, I wasn't thinking particularly clearly in those first couple of days. Oh. Gone! Yes, that's out. The former spin bowler is now trying to piece his life back together after he and Maria had to close down Aristotle's. What did the restaurant mean to Maria and to you? Well, for me, it was everything. Um, for me, Maria, it was her baby. Um, she created it, all the recipes were hers. Um, the feel, the look, everything was hers. But we don't have that now. And his future? I don't know when I'll be able to work again. Um, certainly not until this is all done with. Um, I'd say that's probably the first thing that's got me. Um, then we move on to personal relationships. First of all, you know, we've been let down by friends um, significantly. He says he's now more concerned for Maria. We've lost um, friends. We've lost family, um, particularly Maria, um, who's, you know, you must feel very, very sorry for. Um, he also feels for loyal friends who've stood by him. They've even found impacts on their lives as a consequence of helping me out directly. And um, I think the weight of that on my shoulders and Maria's shoulders, you know, it can't be, uh, can't be underestimated. Stuart McGill has no idea if or when life will get back to normal. It's hurt my family um, 
and I know that a lot of people don't really know what's going on. Um, but I can put both of us in the same boat there too. We don't know what's going on.